I paid a fortune for this waterfront lot, and now I can't clear a few trees to take advantage of my views? That can't be right. At least let me prune them back so they look more like my million dollar landscaping. What's all this fuss about habitat and ecology anyway? Over 50 mangrove tree species grow on tropical coastlines around the world. Florida is home to three species, which can be found from Cedar Key on the west coast to Cape Canaveral on the east coast. Florida mangroves form an ecosystem together. They exhibit zonation patterns, which is to say they can all be found hugging the same bank, but generally separated by type as they move from water to scrub landscape. Rhizophora mangle, the red mangrove, occupies the most seaward zone of the Florida mangroves. Red mangroves can be distinguished by their arching, rust-red properties that have led tourists to call them Florida's walking trees. Look out for their propagules. These are long, pointed, and arrow-like, and drop into the water to grow baby trees. Avicennia germanans, the black mangrove, occupies the next most seaward position. It has pointed leaves with wet-looking upper surfaces and silvery undersides. Black mangroves are a species that has adapted pneumatophores, long stick-like protrusions that can be found coming out of the water all around them. These act as snorkels to provide oxygen to roots when they are periodically flooded. In the most landward position of the three Florida mangroves grows Ligoncolaria racemosa, the white mangrove. Its leaves are more rounded and oval than those of the black mangrove, with small glands at the base of their stems and along the leaf margins on their undersides. The color of its leaves are typically lighter than those of the red mangrove. Florida is fortunate to house these three wonderful species, but Floridians need to work diligently to keep them around. While total mangrove losses do not appear as significant as those of other Florida ecosystems, the losses in a number of areas have been sizable. Tampa Bay has lost 50% of its mangroves in the last century, and in the southern portion of Indian River Lagoon, only one out of every 10 mangroves remain. A number of man-made problems have caused this decline. Pollutants, such as petroleum, man-made sediments, and herbicides are especially dangerous to mangroves, as they clog the pores and mangrove root systems that render the trees capable of respirating underwater. In Florida Bay, mangrove islands are dying because the freshwater flows from Lake Okeechobee, the previously diluted bay water, are being diverted for agricultural and urban use, leaving the remaining water with an unusually high salinity. By far the most significant threat to Florida mangroves, though, is coastal property development. Mangroves have long been the nemesis of developers who wish to provide water views on their properties, but don't care overly too much for the organisms in the water and the trees on the shoreline. The pruning of mangroves done to create these views has resulted in greatly diminished ecosystems. The research showing that pruning leads to less root growth, and in turn less of a home for fish and other underwater species. Over the years, mangrove swamps have been given more and more legal protection as we learn of their environmental importance. However, as long as coastal development remains profitable, Florida mangroves will unfortunately be threatened. So for now, remember those walking trees do more than meets the eye. Enjoy the view. This video was brought to you by Sensing Nature LLC. To learn more about mangroves and other topics, check out our resources at sensingnature.com. See you around.